So we're going to put the jelly on your chest on the side and take some pictures of your heart. And uh, we're going to be moving a transducer around this area and around here. So we're going to get some good images of the heart, the chambers, the valves, and we're going to see, make sure they're doing what they should be doing. That's all good. Is that okay? Yep. Also, what I need to do is to put some electrodes on your chest here, here and here. Okay. So we have the ECG on as well just so that we can do the timing of the heart as well. The electrical activity that we've just re recorded um, has been a, quite a comprehensive assessment, but this is just a single channel, and that gives us a bit more information in terms of timing of the heart, of the heart beat, and in terms of timing to the mechanical events. Okay. So what I need you to do is to roll onto your left-hand side, so you're looking towards the, the side there. Just pop the arm down by your side, and what we're going to do is get you also to empty your lungs at certain points and breathe in and hold your breath, but I will tell you when I need you to do that. Is that okay? Okay, I'm just going to sit beside you here and pop this on here. So at the moment, Lawrence, this is the front of your, your heart. So I will show you the images at the end. Okay. Um, but I'm looking at the, the top of the heart, the left atrium the left ventricle and the aortic and mitral valves. Can I just get you to empty your lungs to blow out and just hold there for a few seconds. And breathe away. And what we can also do is I'm going to put some colour Doppler on here mm -hmm. which allows us to look at which way the blood's flowing through the heart. I'm just making sure none of the valves are leaking. So I'm just now tilting to look at the right ventricular inflow. This tells us um, a little bit more information about the tricuspid valve in the right heart and also the right ventricular walls. Okay, I'm just going to rotate the transducer slightly clockwise. And this way we're going to get some short axis pictures of the ventricle. So we can look at the wall thicknesses and make sure they're not too big. So can I get you to empty your lungs all the way out and just hold there. So now I'm just looking at the aortic valve and the right ventricular outflow tract. And I'm also trying to make sure that your coronary arteries are in the right place and they're connected to the aorta. And you can just see the right coronary artery just coming up here. We'd also like to identify the, um, the flow through the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary valve. And we can see the, the blood moving down here. Okay, Lawrence, you're gonna hear some noises now and it's just the sound of the, the blood flowing through your heart. So, sounds a little weird, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also important to try and detect some of the, the blood going back here, which can give us an indication of how, how the pressures are within the lungs. So you just hold your breath there again. Hold it out? Or just hold it there, just stop breathing. That's good. Either way, well done. Okay, that's all the images that we need to take from this point, okay? So I'm now going to pop the transducer down your left-hand side here, okay. and it's a little bit cold, I'm afraid. But that just gives us another perspective, another orientation of the... So far, everything's looking fine. Um, we've got to make all the measurements offline as well, and we need to make sure that the chambers are as they should be. But functionally, it's all looking good. Okay, can I get you to take a breath in now and hold there and breathe away and again breathe in, just hold there, stop there, that's brilliant and breathe away. So now what I'm looking at is the left atrium, the left ventricle 
the right atrium, the right ventricle, the mitral valve and the, and the tricuspid valve. As I say, it just gives you a different orientation so we can, you've got this three-dimensional organ in the front of your chest so we have to take all these different 2D sure. cuts. Yeah. Okay, so if you take a breath in again slowly and hold, and hold there, that's brilliant. And again, I'm going to put the colour on just to tell us which way the blood's flowing and to some degree how fast it's going. Okay, and breathe away. Now, one of the important things that we need to do in terms of an assessment between an athlete's heart and, and one that's got pathology is to assess function, and in particular how well that ventricle is relaxing. So you're going to hear some noises again now, which is the, the filling of the ventricle. It sounds a little bit different, but it's uh, the similar principle in terms of the, the Doppler sounds you heard earlier. So take a little breath in, and hold there, and you'll hear the noises. And breathe away. Well done. And if you breathe in a touch again, hold that. And breathe away. Again, slightly different, but now we're just looking at the filling of the left atrium. Again, quite an important parameter. So I'm now just zooming in onto the, the left ventricle. So this is the main chamber that pumps the blood around the body. Um, this is the one that becomes thickened often in, in the athlete and also in pathology. So breathe in a touch and hold there. So the, the left ventricle is, takes the blood from the left atrium. So your left atrium is at the top here, the left ventricle down here and um, it receives the blood from the lungs, takes it into the left ventricle, which then pumps it around to the rest of the body through the arterial sure. system. So therefore, when you're doing your exercise, you need that ventricle to be efficient, you need it to do what it should be doing to maintain the output. Okay, I'm also looking at the, um, the velocities of the myocardium, because the movement of this muscle tells us how well it's functioning. Mm -hmm. So um, you're going to hear some even lower frequency noises now. So if you breathe in a touch again, and just hold there, that's brilliant. Now we're just looking at the other wall as well now. And breathe away, well done. One of the things that's um, developed some recent interest is the right side of the heart. Um, because this can be um, it, this can be a uh, differential in terms of it getting bigger with something that we call arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. Yeah. So what we need to make sure is that the right ventricle, which we expect to get bigger, is also functioning well. Yeah. So I'm now just going to go a little bit further around and have a good look at this right ventricle. Once again, I'm going to measure its function. Okay, just hold your breath there. Stop breathing. Excellent. And breathe away. Sorry. You okay? Yep. I just didn't get much better. But <laughs> <laughs> and just hold there as well. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, what I've done now is just rotate around again. So we've gone from this, this 2D cut that's cutting through the four chambers of the heart, and I'm just rotating around to get the front and the back of the heart. So I've got the left atrium, the left ventricle, and the mitral valve just in the middle.
Can I just get you to breathe in a little bit? And just hold that. And breathe away. Well done. And again, I rotate a little bit further around and hopefully we start to get this three-dimensional picture in our, in our heads. So breathe in and hold that. Brilliant. Hold it there. Excellent job. Okay, the final images we're going to do, Lawrence, is we're going to let, get you to lay on your, um, on your back so you're looking up towards the ceiling. Now the heart, as I mentioned and as Nabil mentioned, is right in the middle here. Okay? Are you okay? Yep. So I'm going <laughs> to pop some pressure on your tummy. Okay? We're going to push under here and have a look at the heart from under the rib cage. To do that, I need you to lift your knees up so you're relaxing your stomach muscles. Now this can be a little bit uncomfortable, but it shouldn't be too uncomfortable. It's just a bit of pressure, okay? And I'd like you to take a big breath in and hold. Now here we're looking at the left ventricle, the left atrium, the right atrium, the right ventricle. And breathe away. Now one of the other things is this right side of the heart that I was telling you about, and making sure that the right ventricular wall thickness, this is, a, this is a side of the heart that pumps the blood to the lungs. We want to make sure that's got normal wall thickness as well, and this is the best for you for doing that. So big breath in again, and hold it there. And breathe away. Okay, the other thing is that the IVC, which is your big vein that comes back up here, is, is, is running up this way up the chest. So what I need to do is to have a good look at that, make sure that's normal size, making sure when you breathe in it squeezes as it should do. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to sniff up as hard as you can. Sniff? So if you, hold on a minute, if you sniff up now, nice and hard. Excellent. And again, go in and breathe away, and that looked completely normal, well done. Okay, the final image we're going to do, the aorta branches up here. So your heart sat there in the middle of your chest, aorta comes up around here, so I want to have a look at that aorta and make sure that's not dilated and make sure there's no narrowings in the, in the descending part of it. Sure. So I need you to tilt your chin up. And I'm just going to pop this transducer just in the notch in your neck. And that looks good as well. Okay, so that's the examination finished. What I'd like to do is to get these electrodes off, pull these off here, get you cleaned up, and then I can go through some of the pictures if you're interested in them. Yeah, look. definitely. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the first view. This was the view where we were on the front of the chest, so we're looking at the heart at the top, looking at the, the front and the right side of the heart here. And then this is your main pumping chamber. This is the left ventricle. This is the one that we want to see is functioning well and making sure it's not too big. That's a valve, isn't it? This is a mitral valve yeah. here. Yeah. What we expect with athletes, and particularly um, strength duration athletes like yourself, you'd expect the walls to become a little bit thicker. Yeah. Um, but the important bit is to make sure that that gets thicker, but yes, it's functionally still completely normal. Sure. Um, and we're seeing it squeeze well. We're seeing it contract well. The valves are doing what they should be doing. How would this look abnormal? Um, if this was a, um, a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, these walls here would tend to be much thicker. Yeah. And usually, but not always, we end up with disproportionate thickness of certain elements. In particular, this is a septum. So this is the main, it's like a slab of tissue that runs between the two chambers of the, of the heart. Um, and that usually gets disproportionately thicker. Right. So what we've done is we've put colour on. This tells us which way the blood's flowing. Um, so the blood comes in here, 
goes through the mitral valve, the ventricle contracts, pushes this valve shut and opens this one here. And then we get blood leaving the heart. And again, we want to make sure these valves are doing what they should be doing. We make sure they're opening, they're closing as they should be and they're not leaking. Yeah. Which in your case, they're all doing what they should be. This is one of the key images we have here, this one. Because I rotated round, so I went from here and I rotated clockwise. And instead of cutting through the long axis of the heart, which lies like that, I'm now cutting through a cross section. Sure. So it's like looking through, if you cut an apple or a tomato or anything, you're looking through it in a circle. And this is your left ventricle here. And we're making sure again that it's not disproportionately thickened, making sure that it's contracting as it should be doing. Can you see this around here? So we're looking at the thickness of the muscle as it ink comes in here. And this is part of the right side as well. And these are the two papillary muscles as well. So we want to make sure they're in place where they should be. And again, it's all looking very, very good. We then went down to the left side of the heart. And this is, well, the left side down to the left side of your body. This is a four chamber view. So the cut and the ultrasound beam is cutting straight through the four chambers. And we have the left atrium, the left ventricle, the right atrium, the right ventricle. So we look at it upside down and the wrong way around. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the bottom of the heart and yeah. this is the top. But again, it tells us the same information. Is this thickening as it should be? Is it contracting as it should be? Is it not too big? Is it, is it proportionate for what you would be in terms of your athletic conditioning? Have you guys um, done many like, marathon runners or anything like that? Uh, yes, absolutely. Are their hearts enormous? Uh, they, they tend to have a different adaptation. Yeah. So a marathon runner will have what we call a, a dilat more of a dilated cavity. So you guys, with the strength duration, tend to get more thickness of the muscle wall these guys get bigger cavities yeah. and they, they just end up with a bigger stroke of volts, yeah. bigger stroke of volume to last for the period of time right, that yeah. they're, they're yeah. running. And in particular, you often see the right side get bigger as well. Mm. Um, so this is, uh, these profiles here, these are the Doppler profiles. This is telling us the speed of the blood going through the, the valves. It's also giving us an indication of, of volume as well. So these are essentially functional measurements that help to build up the picture as, it, as to this being a, 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 a physiological heart. And this is an offset view. So I came out a little bit further, took the heart to get the offset view and you see in the right side of the ventricle. Really, really important when differentiating from your type of conditioning to a condition called arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, which I mentioned earlier. If, 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 I had that if that condition you'd expect, and it's not always the case, this, this isn't 100% sensitive or 100% specific, but this ventricle will get bigger. So it gets bigger and it gets dysfunctional, um, which makes it problematic because as you just asked in terms of marathon runners, you do get bigger right ventricles anyway. Mm. So, um, so you end up with a diagnostic dilemma, but really the, the, the key element again is function mm. and making sure the ventricles functioning properly. And again, in your case it is. But it's all, you've always got to step back and say, this is not always 100% sensitive mm -hmm. and 100% specific. And then the one from the tummy. So this was the, oh, I'll show you this one as well, because this is quite nice. This is your aortic valve. So this is the one valve that stops the blood going back into your heart. So it ejects the blood out, squirts it through here. The top of the heart, uh, the top of the aorta is here. The rest of the ventricles are down through the back of the screen. And, um, and you can see the three cusps. You can see the, the, um, the, the right coronary cusp here, the non-cusp and the left coronary cusp. There. Is it possible for them to stop working? Yes, absolutely. This is much more of an acquired disease. It's very unlikely to have it in, in athletes or in young people. It does happen. You do get congenital aortic valve disease, but it's much more a, a, a degenerative acquired disease, particularly in the elderly. Yeah. But I think that's quite a nice image. I assume that the valve opened quite yeah. well. And then this is the subcostal view, which was where we pushed down on the tummy. And we've seen the left side of the heart and again the right side of the heart. And what we can do is measure the thickness of this wall just here, which again looks to be within normal and it should be less than five millimeters. And that looks completely normal. And then finally, was uh, looking at the artery. In certain conditions, such as something what we call Marfan syndrome, the aorta can become dilated. 
um, and this is the aorta which comes away from the heart, branches round, round the neck here and goes down and here we can see that, well I can see that this is not dilated, it's completely normal and this is the right pulmonary artery here. And what we also want to check is make sure there's no narrowings in that aorta and so we've put Doppler through there and make sure the velocity is doing what it should be doing. That's right. And it was all completely normal. That's all good. And that's it. Good stuff. All done.